Pasti bahan ni mah. ตัวเนี่ยเกี่ยวกับตัดอากิเจมุตตะมัตตุตะมัตตะเวยุตะกวามินอามินนี่ฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะฮะ
Tuhina pama hono ai. Ka huri atu ki o ata o tiri ai tua. He pōke ka unuku i tū ai. He tāwhi tama ka ui tau ai. Tū tū mai o pani karanga mana. Karanga mai. Karanga mai. Karanga mai. Ka huri atu la. Tu o ta ata o tiri ai atu o vola ato o fetu langi tia. Haria mai nao mate pāni ka kōtou. Pāri ki ngoi nao wāwe o nao mate o tēnei e tīpuna pāra tātou. Tō mihe tāngi e tātou o tēke tātou. Tō ne ne ka kōtou nao mate moe moe, moe moe, moe moe. Tō ne ne ki hei uri uri tēnei nao konoko. Whakatau hā, whakatau hā. Whakatau hā te langi ilonga nei, whakatau hā te pāpolo nei. Koe ilonga i manu o pāulo tō. Koe loke ngā te pau waho. Te whaka tīnā, tīnā te mōre ki e waiki. E pūpū ana e wawana. Tāre wa tū ki te rangi. E ke pānaku, e ke whanau. Hamai te toki, haui e, hui e, tāre ki. Tō re nā ka huri atu ki a kō te nā mana e nā reo. Nā mai, hana mai. Hara mai rai nui te reo karanga. O e nei rōpū, kōtou kwa tā mai nei. Kai te mihi, kai te mihi, kai te mihi. Te huri atu kia whae, pāta riki. Te ranga tira, kia whae. Me ki te moka puna, o ngā te awa. Hara mai rā whae, hana mai te whāna. Hara mai rā te o rōpū. Te rōpū mana, me te rōpū o tōtei pāke o tātou, ko tāu mai nei wānu i a mātou. Hei te mihi e kau kia kōtou. Kōtou ko tāu mai nei, ki nō te tamānu ka tūtahi. Hara mai rā, e nā waka e nā mana. Hei te mihi, hei te mihi, hei te mihi. Hara mai rā, ki te waka o mātou atua. Mai nga mpria o whārei ki tiki rau. Ko tau te whāna wapanui. Whakatohea. Tau ranga moana ko tau katoa ko hui hui nei. A ki ka fi e tau kaupa mo te pō. Mai nga te mihi atu kia ko tau. Tau liyat kia atu tanaka te haupa. Tau mihi wa kia koe tanaka tira. Hapai te ki te nyako e. E hana mai nei. E te ami te nei kaupa mo tāta. Tau ne nga mihi kia koe tanaka tira. Nā mai, hana mai. Ka huri atu kia koe. E hone. Hana mai rā. A nei rā te whānau. Ko tā, ko tā mai rā kōtou. A nei rā mātou e mihi a kōtou. A tā. A tā e kōtou a kākau, ko tā mai kōtou. Ki whakana rongo e ne, whakarongo e nā kōrō e mākā. E hono e ne kia kōtou a nāki. Tēnei whānau ki rā iwi katoa. Ko tēnei a takinga o nō tōngi ātī a whānau i tōnu. Tō rei huri atu kia koe, kia kōtou. Ka huri atu kia kōtou nā wahi na tō, o tā mana, nā mihi wā kia kōtou katoa o tā mai nei. Kia koe an, an tax, nā mihi wā kia koe, tā koe mōhe a koe te tā mana, o tā mana pāti, koe rā nā mihi wā kia koe ko tā mai nei, i te hana mai te nā iwi katoa, o tē te mōte. A hui tī jō i te nei, ka kia koe hāre, Te tēnā tō hoki, me ki o te party.com, kā pui, me tēnā kā tēnā, kā mi ira kā kōtou. Kā rau e tū nō he hea, te tēnā Māori, o te .com, o nā wera, Māori kō pēra. Uncle, Uncle Kim. O e rāna awha tēnā, kā kwe tēnā kā tēnā, kōtou kata kwa tā mani. Kā rau tūrō nā kōtou 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 i tēnā wā, tāku ngā mai nō. E tu atu ti tau tōku i a kōtou ko tā mai tēnei haini. Tō e mi atu ki a kōtou, tēnā kōtou, tēnā kōtou, kia ora kōtou, ka mi. Kei o ti tāpū ko te pū, mā ta nā te rangi haui. Whakawana na ti ai e tamā ko kwe tōku, ari ari tamā ko kwe tōku, rūru haru hoki ana kwe ki te pao. Oh, my God. 
An amazing Fari you were half an hour ago. Now you're you know amazing Rawatu. They have a back wall that can do something like that. Is uh, for us as the internet mana party, that's like the bringing together of everything that we believe in. That's electronics and Maori all running at the same time. <laughs> For us to be privileged enough to see that this evening, that was amazing. Uh, talking about amazing, we do things in our movement that other parties only dream that they could do. We do things and we get people that other parties wish that they were able to get. The brother and sister combination I'm about to introduce you to this evening, if you're from Whakatane, will not surprise you that they are amongst the list of amazing achievements we, as a party, have been able to get. They are you. You know them. But for me, as not only a friend of the both of them, but a huge fan, to be able to introduce them tonight, 
is uh, our entertainment, is the warmers of our ears and eyes, the appetizers for the main course. It's a super honour and a privilege for me to be able to do so. So without further ado, we hear na homai te paki paki, ki we nei na fūtau tonu o tira na tātou. Nei si rika, au kujei. Thank <laughs> you. 
happen. And that's another reason why I'm so behind this, behind our fire and then behind our mana party, because I was raised by the ocean, by the bush. And if we look after the ocean, we look after the bush, we look after our, our ACs, our people will be healthy. So um, this is Tangaro Whakamoeta, a tribute to Tangaro, <coughs> the ocean god, the god who raised me.
we need to buy the call that's a bit to be home. It's been a long time since I've been home for a whole week, so I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for asking me to come on by. Um, it's, yeah, it's just so good to see everyone smiling faces home again, all this beautiful cocoa. Um, so I was getting a break here to do, do another one. I, I thought, um, you know, it would be appropriate if all of us from my daughter from Ngāti Ohe get up and do this next way at the Piki Mai. Since it was the Kōrero was a bit of a... Yeah, oh, that's just the way. So, um, yeah. Because what's going around tonight is some good stuff. 
We got a good thing going, a real good thing going, yeah, yeah. And to lift my life, yeah. <laughs> Sing that song to yourself, people. Because as of the 21st of September, your lives are going to be so much brighter. <laughs> Just like that light show that we saw this evening. I was watching those Fatu power and all the carvings going. <laughs> it was amazing. Even our Tipuna saying, I told you, fellas. <laughs> So tonight is the first night in the rest of your life. Tonight is the first night of the change that's about to go down in less than three weeks. I think, I don't know. It might be longer, but I never went to maths when I was at school. We had a maths class, but we also had a girls' high just above, just next to our school. And we used to go down the beach, so I don't have mine. In a few more days, we are going to change the government and we are going to change the governing. There's a few people that I need to introduce you to this evening that are going to help with the changing of their government. And they are our speakers. We ain't doing it just by ourselves. We ain't doing it just with these empty chairs here. Oh, they, they are nice empty chairs. This is a smash behind. We are doing it with some powerful speakers and I'd like to introduce you to the first speaker. He comes straight out of the north. You can blame him for Mata to a waka going missing. <laughs> He's a man who's been fighting battles for us as a people for a long, long time. And he doesn't stop just because people say, Alpe, sit down. That makes him get louder and louder. Everybody make some noise for the leader of the Mana movement and the internet. Our next speaker is the lady that brings the internet part to the internet mana party. She's a woman that is not afraid to pull her sleeves up and get her hands dirty if it means somebody is going to benefit. She's the type of lady that's been in parliament and for the last 12 years has been fighting for your rights and for my rights. People, make some noise for Lila. Watch out, dancing the nose, park your songs, or pull a muscle in my neck. <laughs> Our next speaker is another lady with a mission. She's a lady to take you along with her when she makes it into Parliament as your MP for Waiariki. Make some noise for Adam Our next speaker is a young man who comes from a cowboy named place that you fellas all know as Texas. This fella, he, we were talking just a couple of weeks ago at the road show in Gisborne and he's got some ideas that computers and young people can do together to change the way you think about the world. Please finally put your hands together for Patrick Seven. Too, you got my entry song. That's my entry song. I told you about that. Finally, and most definitely not leastly, especially at six foot ten. Oh no, sorry. Six foot eleven. Now the extra feet on him comes from the loud hailer that he usually has in his hand. Going, stop this! Stop that! You buggers! This man is a protester, this man is an activist, this man is the sort of fella that likes to stir it up, little darling. Finally, put your hands together for a man that made South Africa stop hating black people. Yeah. John Minto! Now, 
least but not least, last but not least. You fellas, you know, I already said it. This man entered our lives to the sounds of something like... Please step away from all the money. Please step away from the computer keyboard. We're coming to get you, we're coming to get you, we're coming to get you. And he let out a cry and he said, Come and get me, man. <laughs> he joined up with the, he made the internet party and he joined up with the Mana movement. Now he's soldiering and we're doing it together. We're gonna change this nation because that's what the breather wants to do. Make some noise for Pimp.com! <laughs> Alright, fine, now without further ado, we're going to get the show on the road now. I'm going to introduce you to our first speaker. As I said before, he comes from the Taitokero. He is the next and current MP4 to Taitokero. He's going to win this election because if he doesn't, all our plans are going to go down the toilet. <laughs> Please make some noise and make him feel at home. It's Hone Haramura. Tautoko, <laughs> E te iti me te rahi, koutou o roto o te rohe o wairiki, ni haere mai ki a rongo hia i ngā kōrero, te nā koutou, te nā koutou ki ora tātou katoa. Uh, my name is Hone, Kani, Tamati, Waka, Nene, Haruira. And with a name like that, I could only be the MP for Taitoke. That name just, uh, just does not fit anywhere else. Um, it's a privilege to be here. It's an honor to be up the front here with all of these amazing speakers. These speakers here are so good that I really just set the scene and I let them just blow your minds away when they get Mana began as a determination to fight against what National has been doing to our people. To Maori people in the first instance. But it became clear that if we were going to be doing something, we had to be doing it for more than just Māori. And it also became clear we needed to be doing it for the biggest tribe in the country. And that, that's not Ngāpuri. That's Te Pani Me Te Rawakore. The poor and the dispossessed. Nobody else, nobody else cares to get up and fight for them. Nobody else wants to use em elimination of child poverty is a rallying call. Everybody wants to play games at a higher level. Our focus is not to get too carried away with ourselves, but to stay true to our roots, to stay, stay true to our kaupapa, and stay true to our people. That's money. That's where money came from. But in the last couple of years, we've been struggling with how we can lift this mana message, lift it to another level. How could we raise our game and get our message out to a wider audience. Didn't quite know how to work it out. One day this young fella at my kura up home, at Teranya Niwaniwa, said to me, Hey Batu, you know this kid's not come for? No, not really. I've been to a couple of those spy rallies, but I don't really know him. He was all sort of shifty and nervous. I said, tell me, what's up with? He said, uh, Matu, um, and a 17 year old, this boy, what do, would you mind, um, would you mind if I let Mana join the internet party? Hey! That really, that really shook me up. Really freaked me out. I wanted to kick his ass. <laughs> Got up and walked away. I was so wild and I'm thinking to myself, what the hell is he talking about? Then after I calmed down, I come back and I talked to him some more. Then I decided to talk to some other kids to see whether or not maybe it's just them. 
And it became very clear to me very, very quickly that our kids are ready to fly the net. They're on that internet every single day and they want to fly it. They're ready to fly it. In fact, they know way more about it than most of us in this room do. You know how it goes. The phone doesn't work. Call out to the six-year-old mock and they'll make a movie. And you hear them sometimes saying, Take your finger off, Matua, you can't take a photo like that. <coughs> Our kids are ready to fly their net. And while I'm talking, while I'm thinking about this, talking to these kids, I realise that they're over here, not just Māori kids, our kids, Pākehā kids, Pacific Island kids, everybody's kids. They're ready to fly that net, but there's no connection in politics to our kids wanting to go there. All politicians are stuck over here. And then, that made me realise, I'm going to give this kid.com guy a see what it is that he's got off. Because, of course, Others had been up to talk to Kim.com, I know, because after they'd been up to talk to him, they'd come back in within a couple of weeks, Labour's releasing their digital policy. <laughs> a few weeks later, the Greens are up there seeing him. About a month later, they're releasing their digital policy. I'm thinking to myself, man, there's more to it than this. And so I finally got to meet the guy. He invited me up to the mansion, because everybody else goes up to the mansion. <laughs> now it... Nah, better not, better not, mate. Tell you what, my mate's got a place on the North Shore. Let's say you come down to see me down here tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Boom, he was there. So we got talking, and I'm listening to this guy talking. Everything he's talking about, absolutely everything he's talking about, is so new to me, so out there. And I'm, I'm over here, and my staunch on my hard ass, nobody mucks me around kind of will. And I'm listening to this guy talking and thinking, should I retreat back into my shell over here? Or shall I take the chance? Shall I t take the challenge and say, yeah, I think I can, I can hook what we're doing to what he has to offer. I think I can make our kōpapa fly the net if we can hook up this guy. Scary moment. Scary moment for me as an individual, even scarier for Mana. When I talk to Mana, 99.999% came back with a, What the do you think you're doing? <laughs> so, of course, especially the army. So, of course, I'm copping all of this flag, and, I, and uh, we've got our AGM coming up. So, I says to Kim.com, Hey, mate, I'm copping all this flag. And it's not really my fact to cop. You cop it. You come to our AGM. Well, that was a scary. What you got? John Minto, you've got Sir Bradford, you've got uh, Annette Sykes, you've got uh, Donna Owatere, you've got Hilda Halkia and Hagawira. You've got the seriously mean people just waiting to pounce on him. He comes, he speaks, bugger me, daddy, wins them all over. <laughs> I'm sitting back there going, shit, this guy's pretty good. This guy's pretty good. And then, of course, we started taking it on the road. We started challenging ourselves to, to, to be bold enough to step through this door. Not to be scared. And not to be told by the media or by any other political party what it is that we as mana should be doing. Because, of course, you get all these right-wing media saying, how dare Hone Haruda representative of the poor, talk to a man who's got so much money. And I'm saying, well, well, what are you fellas doing for us, you rich people in the media? Absolutely nothing. So we challenge ourselves to do things for ourselves. It's about us going, taking it to another level. It's about us wanting to grow money. It's about us wanting to hook up with the party that actually has a connection with a whole new way of doing things that our kids understand. So that our kids can get re-engaged, so our kids can get energized in the process of political movement in this country. But then, we're still out here, and I'm wondering, mate, John Minto pushing me from the back, and Te Hamu running away with the microphone. <laughs> we are surrounded by talent in this team. This is the kind of team, I'll take the parliament, we'll do the damage with it on anyone. I don't care whether it's the National Party, whether it's the Labour Party, even whether it's my mates in the Greens. If it comes to a fight, 
this is a crowd that I'll stand with Monday, Tuesday, any day of the week. That's who we are. This is a theme that's going to change the way in which politics is conducted in this country. This is a team, when you look at them, you know these people from years ago. You know these people for what they've done every single year. The last 30 years they've been action. This is a team of people that will not be denied. This is Internet Money. I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be speaking to you. I'm proud to hand it back to my brother Te Amu, so you can introduce the rest of the crew. Te Whoa, one other thing. When you go home tonight, when you go home tonight, just one little thought I want you to remember. It's one I picked up from a guy that I met in jail once. He was in jail. I was visiting him. He said to me, Happy are those... Oh, it was a Filipino, this guy. Actually, it was a Catholic... He's a priest, Catholic priest. His president had locked him up because he was criticising the state. I was likely to be killed. Any I said, how can you be happy? How can you be so, you know, full of love for the people here in jail? All of them are very, very scared. But you come across with this real uh, aura of love and happiness. He said to me something I've never forgotten. Happy are those who dream dreams and are prepared to pay the price to make those dreams come true. That's all of us here tonight. Happy are those who dream dreams and are prepared to pay the price to make those dreams come true. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. You know, every time Tony brings out that quote at the end of his speech, it reminds me of a friend of mine who also was in jail. And he met a fellow who went, pick up the soap, pick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our final, our next speaker has been labelled a sugar daddy. He's been labelled a Nazi sympathiser. He's been labelled a criminal. Those labels threw them out the window and relabeled him a breather. Today in Ruatuki, he said to the iwi, You are my family. I feel as if I am one of you. I look straight at Horn and say, Please find I'd like you to make welcome right to the stage right now. Our cousin, Tim Dotcom. Tena koto, tena koto, tena koto. <laughs> Lovely to be here. I feel like home. This place is like I am. It's warm. It's big. It's high tech. Right? Stair stories of heroism and courage. I feel home here. And uh, I think the whole internet part of Internet Mana is going to be an easy sell after what I've seen tonight. You know, and I'm always talking about how we are the time machine. Well, this is where we will go if you all vote for us. In 10 years, every Marae will look at this. <laughs> Amazing. You know, today, this afternoon, I was uh, at another Murray and one of the Maori elders said, uh, you know, Kim, you have been single for some time. It's time uh, you find a Maori woman. And uh, I definitely want to have your number, Macy. <laughs> But 
let's get to the more serious political stuff. Let me start by telling you how the internet party started. Because there's a lot of uh, uh, wrong stories out there. Uh, the Prime Minister claiming that it's all just for me, you know, fighting my extradition. Which is completely wrong. Because I fight my extradition in court. I have some of the best lawyers in the country. And so far, I have won against this government eight times in court. I don't need a political party to beat them. I started this party because after I was raided and I told my story on John Campbell, I had an amazing amount of support from New Zealanders. You know, they seized all of my assets and uh, my wife was pregnant with, pregnant with twins and, you know, we didn't even have a car to take her to the hospital. We didn't have uh, the most basic uh, things. And that was a huge adjustment for us from, you know, the kind of mansion lifestyle that we had. And, you know, so many people came to us supporting us, bringing us uh, food baskets, people giving us a car, uh, you know, very generous uh, people. And then, um, you know, whenever there was a story about me in the media, 95% of the comments of people responding to that were on my side, having my back, supporting me. And, you know, I was about to give up because when you face the US government, the New Zealand government, all the Hollywood studios and all the record labels, you feel rather small. You feel like, I can't take them on, I'm just one guy. I'm like a fart compared to them. <laughs> but uh, the support that I experienced gave me the strength to actually stand up, put myself back together, and, and enter the arena and fight. And uh, the internet party is my gratitude, is my way of saying thank you to those who supported me. Because, you know, I'm good at what I'm doing. I understand what's <laughs> lagging in this country. Let me give you an example. When I first arrived in New Zealand, I connected to the beautiful country. I connected to the friendly people, but I could not connect to the internet. <laughs> and it's still like this today. And the last six weeks that I have been on this road trip, I, I, I traveled uh, around 10,000 kilometers, and about half of the time, I wouldn't have any <coughs> cell phone coverage at all. Zero. Not even one bar. And I was thinking to myself, well, how many people die in New Zealand because they have a car crash, and they can't even call emergency services? And we're supposed to be a first world country. Well, when it comes to our te technology and, and connectivity, we are like Zimbabwe. We are the third world, and we need to change that. Because the biggest promise for New Zealand to grow, to grow its economy, to grow the pie, is technology and connectivity and the internet. It's the biggest marketplace in the world. Look how the internet has changed our lives just in the last 10 years. Look how it has changed everything, from how we communicate, to how we buy things, to how we learn about things. And just imagine what it will do in the next 10 years. And right now, in New Zealand, we are lagging so far behind that we are not going to take any of that market share that the internet promises. Because, for example, 200,000 of our students that go to school don't even have an internet connection at home. They can't participate in this new world. They can't grow with these new opportunities and you know, take advantage of them. And that is wrong, <clears throat> and we want to change that. Now let me talk a little bit about how this partnership came about with uh, MANA. Everyone you know, thought, well, that's an odd couple. <laughs> how, how can these guys work together? And you know, uh, I've met a lot of different politicians from every single party other than national. And uh, I wanted to learn 
before I entered into the political arena, I wanted to hear what everyone had to say and I wanted to find out who I could connect with the best. Who had the best ideas, who had the best vision. And I didn't expect it to be Hornady because before I met him, what the media told me is that he is some kind of extremist, racist, you know, child's eating, <laughs> rich hater. And that, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to have uh, any uh, serious conversation with him. But once I got to know him, I saw that that was all wrong. That the media has painted that is nothing like this man. You know, he cares about people. He cares about equality. He wants to get rid of everything that's wrong. Or he wants to reduce the gap between the rich and the poor. And the more I talk to this man and the more I learn from him, the more I understand how awesome he is. And, you know, I all... I, I gotta say, you guys gotta trust this man. He's not like the usual politicians, like the other guys that I met. They will just tell you what you want to hear. This guy tells you how it is. And that's why I'm really happy that uh, we entered into this partnership. And this guy is all about social fairness. And who couldn't be for that? Any of my tech entrepreneur friends that are all rich and made a lot of money, you know, they have a heart. They are not, uh, 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 you know, against equality. It makes perfect sense that as a fair, sophisticated society, we take care of everyone and make sure that everyone has the same chance to build a life, build a family, and be successful. That's what this guy is all about. So I'm really happy about this partnership. I think I found the right home uh, with Mana. And we are bringing the technology part into it. We are bringing the vision into it, how to take New Zealand into the future. And we know how to do this. Look at Patrick. He's from here. Look at this Murray. This guy understands what it means to move us into the future. You know, he could connect to the internet party because he understands where the future is and what it holds for us. And we need to fight together for equality but at the same time, for taking this country into the digital age. And right now, we are far away from that. And let me give you another example. You know, we need to invest into our youth. Our young people are the ones that are going to take this country forward. And right now, what's happening with the current student loan system, we are telling them to leave New Zealand once they are done with their uh, university degree. <coughs> Once they enter into a professional life, they already have a huge mortgage. They have to pay between sixty to hundred thousand dollars back to the government, and they are leaving New Zealand to find higher-paying jobs abroad because there are no jobs here. And then they build their families there, they build their friendships there, their networks there, and they never come back. So the people that we need the most to build our economy, to build our future, to create the jobs, we send them away. And that makes no sense at all. So the Internet Mana Party is going to reintroduce free tertiary education. And not just that, I mean, we also want to find a way, we haven't found it yet, but we're looking for a way uh, to get rid of existing student loans as well. <laughs> you know, and another thing that we need in New Zealand, because this is a country of innovators. This is a country of smart people with great ideas that invent great things, and it has always been that way. We need to have an incentive program for people with great ideas. And let me tell you a little story about myself. When I was 19 years old, I was a hacker. And uh, I was convicted of hacking. I was in court. You know, I hacked NASA because I wanted to know if aliens really exist. I hacked the Citibank because I wanted to make a large donation to Greenpeace. Love those guys, right? I hacked the 
German credit rating system because I wanted to put the credit rating of our prime minister to zero. I didn't like the guy. <laughs> so I ended up with a conviction, but when the judge looked at me at the end, he said, well, this was really youthful foolishness. Why don't you use your gift and your talent to help these companies and governments that you have had to make their systems more secure? And I thought, well, here's a great idea. So I wrote a business plan, took that to my German government. Within a month, they provided me with an interest-free loan for a 20-year duration of a million dollars. Didn't have to pay back a penny for 20 years. Within a year, I created 50 jobs, and in the second year, I paid it all back. And we need something like this in New Zealand. Because the bright people that can create these businesses and these jobs, they are right here in this country. We don't need to look elsewhere to find the opportunities. The smart people are right here, they just don't have the opportunities. We need to modernize our education, not just make it free, it needs to be state of the art. We need to reshift our focus away from the old economy from farming and foresting because there is no growth in those markets. There is no growth anymore. We need to establish a new thinking in New Zealand where we are going to invest into the future economies and they are digital. So we need to make sure that our kids have the connectivity that they need they have the technology that they need, they get the ed education that they need, and if we do that, I promise you, we can lift New Zealand to new highs, and we can increase our GDP by at least 100% in 10 years. I'm convinced of that. And there are examples of other countries that have done that. My home country, not just Germany, Finland is one example. Finland has done really well with focusing on tech. You know, they have a tech society now, and they are doing really well. There's hardly any unemployment. You know, Nokia was born in, in Finland. And a single company that is successful like Nokia, a single king hit, can lift an entire country out of inequality. Finland is a good example. Another example is South Korea. Those guys, over a decade ago, had a similar kind of industry like New Zealand, focusing on farming. They made an educated decision to say, we want to focus on the technology sector. Now every single household in South Korea has a 100 megabit internet connection, and their unemployment dropped from over 10% to just 2.6%. So what I'm talking about is not some crazy idea. Others have done it. There is no reason why we couldn't do it too. And I know how to do it. Yeah. You know, another important thing, how are we going to pay for all this stuff? You know, all this infrastructure is going to be expensive. Free education is expensive. But you know what? In New Zealand, we have some vast, untapped tax resources. If we open these up, they are only going to affect the top 1% and the corporates and none of you, and we can pay for all of it. And let me give you one example. Capital gains tax. With capital gains tax, we can pay for the tech infrastructure that I'm talking about and free education. Because what's happening now, banks and rich people that are investing in stocks and selling these stocks with high profits pay zero tax on these profits. Zero. Absolutely nothing. With the tax that we want to introduce, we are only going to hit the bankers, the corporates and the rich 1% and they're going to pay for everything. It's going to be a total number. And you know, 
they really made a big mistake when they radicalized me and got me to enter into the political arena because I know all their tricks. I know exactly where they are hiding their money. And I'm going to get that for you. And we're going to have some fun. Now, I want to say something about Lila. Because, you know, Lila came on board and she got so much flag. She was fired at from all directions. The media was throwing mud at her and she stood there and was all bouncing off. And she just stood her ground, united these two parties with an amazing leadership skill. And wherever she goes, whenever she speaks, people listen, they get it, and she is the reason why we are now polling over 4% and we're going to get over 5%. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, before we got here, this is just a, a side story. They told me we're going to fuck a tongue. I'm like, what? <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. There's a place like that? And tonight we're going to turn Fakatani into Fakat National. How about that? Are you ready to change the government this year? Alright, Fakat Junkie. I just like to go right back to the start of Kim's speech here and um, just point out that I'm very jealous of his corridor to Macy. Because I've sung to him, he didn't ask for my number. I'd like to take him up on that offer of inventing things. You know, coming into the marae and having to bend down to take your shoes off, untie the laces. I reckon we need eye-to-foot technology. Where you just look and you go, right, right wing for untie, left wing for tie up. And then you just and then pull your foot up. And then when you go out again, and it even has correct foot technology to make sure that like when I was at Gisborne Boys High School and we used to go away on Marae visits and St. Stephen's College would come with us, we'd leave our shoes there and take this. So we need some sort of, you know, some sort of, uh, yeah. but I don't tell anyone because I'm going to invent that. I'd like to introduce you to our next speaker. Now this man it's quite a hard case. When I first became uh, involved with the Mana Movement, and only just last year, I thought, geez, I'd better have a look at all, all of these people. I knew who Hone Harawira was, because he was the father that my dad always said, turn the TV off. <laughs> I knew who Andy Ed Sykes was, because everybody, oh, look at her, she's always growling somebody. <laughs> I didn't know who John Minto was, so I had to Google him and have a look at him. He's not very well liked amongst the assholes of the country. He's one of those people that wants to go around and help the underachievers. How dare he put his hand up for people that are getting stood on all around the world? What do you mean it's bad for it to be illegal to be a black man in South Africa? When I saw that, I thought, man, I'm joining this party. I've got to be with people that are hated on for being good people. And if there's anybody in this room today that's good people, it's John Minto. Make him welcome. Uh, 
chairs and look at this end, I thought, yeah, what is this? there must be some sort of big pull-down screen or something. Yeah. Um, but in fact, what, a, what an amazing display, and I just want to congratulate the local people here. This is a fantastic place, and uh, it is an amazing spirit, amazing warmth, and it's an absolute privilege to be here. So let's give this marae a round of applause. Yeah. 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 This afternoon at, at Waikiri Kiri Marae, um, Lila Hare said that she thought that internet mana would be able to change the face of politics in this country. And uh, I'll just go back to three years ago. I've, I've never joined a political party before until I joined mana. And I joined mana on the strength of Pony Harawara, who I'd known for a very long time. Um, and I'd always said to, to people like Moni, you know, a political activist can be far more effective outside Parliament with a loud hailer than an MP inside Parliament. <coughs> because MPs, good people, go to Parliament and they kind of just disappear into the woodwork. You never hear anything of them again. <coughs> Nothing changes. They come back and someone else uh, takes their place. So I've always thought, you know, you can do, be much more effective as a political activist outside. But when, this, uh, when Mana came along, it was very clear that this was a different party, a different kind of movement. Because what Mana was talking about is we're working with, with groups outside Parliament to bring real change inside Parliament. You know, politics is not about five minutes in the ballot box every three years and then you elect some sort of dictatorship to run you for three years. But politics is about being involved. And the most successful movements around the world, anywhere in the world, are movements where people in, the, in their masses have got involved when they sense injustice, when they sense they need real change. And so um, when I joined Mana, I wasn't still convinced it was the right decision. So I got my receipt, you know, the little receipt you get out of the book, and I put a bit of sellotape on it, I stuck it on the wall of my office, and I would say to people who came into my office at that Unite Union, I'd say, see that receipt? That's my membership of Mana. That might be the worst decision of my life. <laughs> or it could be the best opportunity in my lifetime to make real radical change in New Zealand. And I think it's the second. I think we're going to show that on September. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to just talk about two things. Because for me, policy is sort of everything in a way. Personalities are one thing, yep, personalities are fine, but you have a personality like, um, well, no, I, won't, yeah, I'm I won't pick on them. <laughs> no. Personalities who, who go to Parliament and they're, and, they're, and they're on the TV every night and they talk a lot and they this and they that and nothing changes. Well, I'm talking about um, getting, we're talking about money in peace going to Parliament. It's not to be flash in front of the cameras. Not to eat our lunch and collect a big fat salary, but going to Parliament determined to bring real change in this country. And I want to yeah, do some work. And uh, the two things I want to talk about briefly are tax and housing, because these are two big things. And I had a wonderful introduction here from, uh, from uh, one of the people in the 1% who says, Kim, uh, I have to say, you know, I've been well out of my comfort zone a lot in the last three years. And when I get called to this meeting, and uh, there's this, uh, Connie had already met with Kim.com, uh, and, and, uh, and I thought, holy, and I, you know, I just, I just calm down, just, you know. And as, uh, let me just put it this way, um, let's cut to the chase and say this. When people say to me, what are you guys getting into bed with, with, uh, with a multi-millionaire for? And I say this, I say, every political party gets funded by the corporates. Every political party gets funded by the corporates. They used to run cake stores. You know, Labour would run cake stores and National run cake stores. They don't do that anymore. They just go to the corporates for money. In Mana's case, 
The whole country knows where the money's coming from. You don't know that with the other parties. You do with mana. And the money that's come in for internet mana has come without any policy conditions. We haven't changed any of our policies. We are mana. We have retained our integrity in this relationship. And we will continue to do so as we build this political movement. I wouldn't be here if it was, oh, well, look, um, we will get this money, but, but we'll have to sort of tone down our housing, we'll have to change this or change that. No, forget it. Mana's mana, we've got big bold policies, and these policies are going to bring real change. Taxation, um, what Kim said is, is absolutely right. I did these calculations the other day. Nothing flash, anybody can do it. If you look at what the, the amount of tax that a worker on the minimum wage pays, right? a worker on the minimum wage, they pay income tax and they pay GST. So you pay tax on every dollar you earn and every dollar you spend. And for someone on the minimum wage who works 40 hours a week, they pay 28% of their income in tax. 28%. Now you compare that to the people in the 1% at the top. Compare it to John Key. I did the calculations for John Key. He's Prime Minister. He gets $428,000 a year for being Prime Minister. He pays $132,000 in tax on that. But he has this other income. $5 million increase in his wealth last year. Which means his income, his actual income, is $5,428,000. But he only pays that income tax and he pays a bit of GST. His tax rate, now remember the worker on the minimum wage pays 28% of their income on GST. John Key pays 2.8% of his income on taxation. Two point. The minimum wage worker pays 10 times higher tax rate than the Prime Minister. That is wrong. And Mana is going to change that. Because it's the arrangement of internet money. This is our party list. You know, internet money, we're, we're joining together and we're going to make those changes. So, taxation has just gone completely out of kilter. The last 30 years, wealth has shifted from the poor to the rich. The biggest shift of wealth in New Zealand's history. And that's why we have families where people live in poverty. That's why we have 300,000 children living in poverty. That's why we have over 100,000 children going to school every day hungry in a land of plenty. That's an absolute disgrace. It's a shame on all of us. And the politicians and the main parties don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it because they get all their corporate donations from people who want to keep getting richer and richer. And we're saying no. We're saying we're going to make radical changes here so that the, the tax burden is shifted from people on lower incomes and elsewhere. We want to raise the wages. We're going to stick the minimum wage at, um, at $18.80, which is the living wage. And that's a wage where people can begin to live lives of dignity and respect and can start to get an income where they can, they can raise a family and feel good about being a citizen, having a place in the sun in this country. word about housing. There's been a huge amount about housing in the media. In Auckland, every single day you open the Herald and there's a housing story. There's this housing crisis. People can't buy houses. It's actually what the Herald are portraying and what the media are portraying is this sort of crisis for middle class children, children middle class parents who struggle to buy houses. And that's true, they are. They are struggling. But there's a far bigger crisis, which is among low income families. We've got families around the country who are living in cars because they haven't got houses. We've got families living in, in, in cockroach-infested caravans. We've got families living three or four to a, to a property. It is unbelievably bad. And we've got a government that is smashing state houses in Glen Innes, where our community is standing up to fight for them. Let's give a round of applause for Glen Innes. Back in the 1940s, New Zealand had a housing crisis then as well. We had lots of young families. We had soldiers coming back from the war. We had a desperate housing shortage. And what did our government do then? 
The Labor government in the 1940s built 10,000 state houses every year until they didn't need to do it again. We are going to do that. Internet Mana is going to do that when we get the influence in government with the change of government. So, as I said before, this, is, uh, this whole thing has been a little bit outside my comfort zone. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teacher and uh, you know, I, most of the people I've mixed with are middle class Pākehā people. And middle class Pākehā people have been very sceptical about this. They were saying, why are you, why are you guys doing this with Dr. What's, what's all that about? And it, in fact, among people, among low income families right around the country, you don't get that reaction. You just get this thing, wow, with those mana policies, getting a real boost through internet money, man, that's very exciting. So we're on a really big trip. I think we're going to absolutely surprise ourselves. We're going to absolutely astonish the country on September 20th. We're going to do it incredibly well. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora koutou. Mr. John Winkler, isn't he a nice man? Give him another round. I met our next speaker uh, a couple of weeks ago after I had been on the road for a couple of weeks doing these road trips and I was pretty worn out. We got back to Gisborne and it was time for the Gisborne road trip so I went to the Kylie Mall to my office and I walked in there and there was this fellow with a internet mother t-shirt on and the 